so while the flames leap beneath the pans, Gavin. Wow, that was good. What are you making? So we're going to make gnocchi alla Parisienne. Okay. So this is a classic um, gnocchi dish. We would make this dish a lot of Café Bleu. So there's, the Café Bleu menu is made up of four muses. So you have the traditional French. Um, you have vegetarian. Mm -hmm. um, so it was voyage, uh, potager. So voyage, you could like travel around wherever you wanted to. And then seasonal, saison. And so this would always sort of fit, usually in the potager, that we would, typically we'd make it vegetarian. Right. Um, and we do this dish a lot at, at Spoon and Stable as well. And Belcour, when we had the French Bistro just as is, we would do it there too. Uh, but it's a very simple dish. So we just have milk. We'll just put milk and butter in here. Like all French cooking, it just is... start with, yeah. Start with the, the, the most diet-conscious items. Right. Right? Naturally. Thick, great dairy. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. So... The whole, you know, there's two different types of gnocchi that are usually made. You have the potato gnocchi, so mm -hmm. very Italian, mm -hmm. um, very rustic. I mean, you also have, I guess, the semolina base, too, which you could do. Yeah. Um, and then this is the French, so you make pâte Oh, okay, okay. I so, ah, yep. got it. Yep. But as we learned from our friend Bill Buford, I mean, Lyon being the connection to the Italians, mm -hmm. so the gnocchi tradition comes over the Alps. Sure. It's Frenchified in yeah. Lyon. Yeah, And then it's... And then it's uh, really diversified across the rest of the Which country. Which then usually, if it's Frenchified, then it usually means that it's French. Right. Right? So that's sort of the difference. Is that well, they don't like to talk about the other influences No, so naturally. Why would you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Bill's the best. Oh, Bill, Bill's the you best. You know, when Bill wrote that book, I, I, there was a lot of stories in that book where Bill and I were having dinner together. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I remember cool. him living, you know, because we would go over there to train for Boku Store. Yeah. And, of course, we would, we would just go and see Bill. Yeah. And hang out with him. and He's the coolest. Drink a bottle or seven of wine. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You know, uh -huh. The Jessica picked, which was like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's such a special guy. Yeah. So, you know, once, you know, th this, it's funny, this recipe, because this pate is, of course, can be savory-focused, but naturally it can be... It, more commonly, I should say, it's sweet focused. Yeah. Right? Okay. So for eclairs, profiteroles, sure. things like that, croquembouche. Yeah. So. Which is the original pastry innovation or French yeah. improvement that created pastry yeah. was that light, fluffy, sweet from the heavier pasta yeah, yeah. kind of bread thing from the Italian. So eclair is my, my, my 11 year old Emile, it's his favorite, like one of his favorite desserts. And so when I told him I was making gnocchi, and he said, oh, so with potatoes. And I said, no, it's a gnocchi al prisienne, so you can saute it and sear it. It's made from pâte mm -hmm. And he's like, daddy, you know how to make pâte <laughs> And I said, yeah, I know how to make pâte And he's like, well, you should be making eclairs Wh at why, home. Why, why, why are you not? I'm like, break out the Amex, kid. <laughs> like, I'll make you pâte all day long, but you gotta pay your father, you know? <laughs> Whereas my other son, when COVID hit, my other son was so funny, like, it may, it may have been the third or fourth week into it and I'm cooking at home and I'm making some braised lamb shanks and there's like an apricot glaze and my, my nine-year-old Julius looks at me and says, Daddy, are you going to be home every night? And I said, I think I'm going to be home every night for a while. I mean, right now it's, it's pretty dire out there. This is novel for yeah. him. And he yeah. looks at me and he's like, I'm kind of a chicken and white rice kid. <laughs> he's like, not sure I'm so into the braised lamb shanks. Just tone it down. Yeah, he's like, just, just tone it down, Dad. You know, like, let mom take care of my plate. You take care of your plate. <laughs> I'm like, you don't have any idea who your father is, do you? You want to talk to me for that? All right, so, I mean, it's just like... That's, well, they are their own people, whether um, we like it or not. But that's you, that's so, the rule. You know what? I learned something fascinating, though. I said, okay, here's the deal. I'm happy to cook chicken and white rice for you. But when I make different food, I now want you to explain to me why you don't like it. Hmm. Okay? So you can tell me that you don't like the braised lamb shake, but I need to know why. Yeah. I said it's spicy, so there's no spice in there. So now let's now let's break down what really is. And so I've tried to learn, I've tried to learn and teach him, you know, what his palate is trying to tell him, which has been really wild actually. Is that is how's that going? Great, his palate's great now. I mean now he can taste something and he can say, yeah. Oh, I don't like it because it's too salty, or I don't like it because it's too acidic, or right. I don't like it because it's too fatty. Yeah. Um, you know, he's starting to learn like rich. What does it mean if something's too rich? Sure. So yeah, it's, it's, the, it's, I, I found with our kids the mistake with they, they often make with calling something spicy is it's just this catch-all term. It's flavor for, for flavor, yeah. and it isn't heat. Right. Well, we mistake that it's heat or right. it's this or that. Right. You know, but it's yeah. So the more adjectives, the more descriptors you can give them. Yep. Well, that came so, together pretty fast. Yeah. So here you just add the flour, and yeah. as you can see, it's starting to already pull away. Right. Yeah. So it's really starting to create the dough. So this is sort of how it is now. And then what I'll do is I'll move it, I'll move it over to here into this mixer. 
So this is the beginning of the famous uh, pat at uh, the back fin that George Pierre used to make. Oh man, he was something else. Yeah. You know, the only, the only guy that I'm taller than. <laughs> so it's okay. Uh, whoops. So we're gonna take some of this cheese. So. Which he did not put into his. He didn't, he didn't do that, right? No, no. So what I'll do is I'll put it on low. And then what I'll do is I'll put a little bit of cheese in here at a time. Okay. And this is what? Just good mozzarella? Parmesan. Or parm excuse yep. me, good dry parmesan. Yep. Yeah. And so essentially the, the, the heat of the pate choux is basically melting, melting the cheese. Melting the cheese. And, and then you get the friction of the mixer, so yep. that helps, yeah. So it's not gonna get too it's not gonna get too chunky inside. Right. But parm doesn't just fall apart either. Nope. It's, these aren't American slices. No, nope. and it, and and the good thing is too is it's it's okay for the Parmesan cheese to have a little bit of texture inside of this yeah. pate choux. Yeah. Okay. Now before I before I add the eggs, I'll just kind of scrape scrape everything down a little bit. Mm-hmm. And, and then do you do whole eggs or just just yolks? So whole eggs. Whole so eggs. the key the key to this to pate choux, in my opinion now is actually the most important part because you can you don't want to put you don't want to pour all the eggs in at once right crack them one at a time all right let let it take its time and slowly mix and, in and are you using the whites for the loft yep okay yep so you do the whole thing now as you can see it's starting to gain a little bit of traction yep it's mixing together if I were to add this all at once, we would basically we would over whip it. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, we'll, you'd have like a flowery meringue. Yeah. It just you don't want that. You could you could do it, but it probably wouldn't be very good. Right. Okay. So we're just gonna bring this down. You know, I, I will say like as <clears throat> as a savory chef, I'll always be so thankful of my time when I lived in Switzerland because I I, I worked pastries a majority of my time that I was there. Mm -hmm. And that was more because the people that I worked for Needed in the pastry, a pastry part, chef. Yeah, and, and they were the ones that spoke English. And I didn't speak any French, I didn't speak a word. There's a couple of spots in your life, your chef development, yeah. where necessity is the mother of your yeah. career improvement. Yeah, I mean, listen, like, you know, somebody says, why, why would you move to a French-speaking region and not know how to speak any French? Yeah. That's exactly why I moved to a French-speaking region. <laughs> Figured I'd learn French. Now I met a Swedish woman, and I still can't speak Swedish, but yeah. nonetheless, it's okay. So she can swear at you in a different language, and you don't know what... That I know. Yeah, okay. You know what's funny about languages? If you think about it, what's the one... What's the one when you're learning another language, what's the, what's the first set of phrases you pick up first? Always curse words. Mm -hmm. Always, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And the reason is, is because the pitch of our voices change when we swear. Just a little. A lot. And, <laughs> and so you end up paying closer attention to yeah. what's being said, Yeah. which is pretty wild. All right, I'm gonna do one more egg. And then what I'll do is I'll turn the mixer up and I'll give it a good, a really strong whip. Okay. All right. So. That liquefied it. Yep, so that's gonna liquefy it a little bit. And it basically, so what, what we saw before was very, very doughy. Yeah. Right? And then what I'm gonna have you do is grab that, that um, piping bag sure. and just hold it open for me. And we'll just pour a little bit of that in there. Last time I did this was when Pierre Zimmerman was here, no pressure. Yeah, I mean, listen, I don't want to mess up your shoes. No, I'm, I don't want you to either, to be honest. <laughs> All right. So, I'll grab a little butcher twine here. And we'll just... So there's a couple of different ways that you can do it. I mean, you can butcher twine it like this, right? Mm -hmm. Just mix it around. You could also cut the, the piece of plastic in half, right? Split it right down the middle, and then you just kind of create. Yeah. Create like another a tie little. and knot. Yep. Exactly. So you would make this dough at Cafe Balloud, and then you would drop it in the water fresh on the on the ticket, basically, right? Yep. We we always drop it fresh. Yeah. 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 So sorry, I had to open that up like that. <clears throat> so what we'll do is we'll wait until this water 
comes to a boil, so you're gonna have to wait for a little. No problem. E little TV magic, if you will. Yep. And we could go from there. Yeah. Man, cafe, cafe, we would make. The other thing we would do at cafe, the, the to order, mm -hmm. would be the soft shell crabs. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so you had to, you had to clean the soft shell crab to order. Okay. So the crab are live. You yeah. can't, you can't not clean them, or you can't. Um, you, you can't. They have to be live. They have to be alive, so you gotta cut off the face yep. and then the gills to order. And that would be really, that'd be, that would be really tough. Yeah. Because often what would happen is the cooks would run out of the food and they wouldn't, they'd forget because you'd order so many crab. It's a chef, I'm out of soft shell crabs. We had this one guy, <clears throat> his name was Country. We called him Country. His name was Drake. And Country would sit there and he'd say, chef, I think I'm out of soft shell crabs. I'd say, listen, I can't, I can't go to the, to the table and tell him you're out of soft shell crabs. I ordered, you gotta go and tell him. So he'd walk out there with his thick southern accent. He was so charming. He'd say, ma'am, I'm sorry, my name's Country. I don't have your crab, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna make you some shrimp. <laughs> and these sweet, these sweet people would be like, thank you, Country. He'd be like, thank you, ma'am, I appreciate you. <laughs> he'd walk away and say, how'd it go? And he's like, yeah, we're good, chef, we're good. <laughs> I'm like, how the, how the fuck how are you doing? How did you do it in New York? How did you, you just, you just 86'd like, it at the, their table for the, the them. Lady you just one of the best to, restaurants. The lady you just spoke to is like the meanest woman on the planet. <laughs> You're like, no, chef, she loves me. I'm like, <laughs> okay, I'm glad she loved you. <laughs> like, so 70% how you say it. Dude, I'm telling you. 20% what you say. I mean. Or 20% how you look when you say it. So when he did a stage. 10% what you yeah, say. Yeah, when he did a stage with us. He kept saying that well, I've told him, I said, I want you to, 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 to cut these whole tails of lobster. And so he said, okay, chef, I'll take them whole tails. So, and I said, no, whole tails. I said, this is a hotel. Why don't you cut the whole tail? He said, that's why I said hotel. I'm like, Jesus Christ. Right. Here we go. I'm like, listen, country, I can't handle you, man. Where is he now? Do you know? He owns a restaurant in, in um, he's in Louisiana. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we're gonna, we'll saute up some mushrooms while the water boils. Um, <laughs> yeah. Amazing, right? Yeah. Uh, so when you're in the thick of it with your three restaurants. Yeah. And you, I mean, before you were on your phone, you got a famous, you got a customer coming in, you're, you're texting a famous ball player, it'd be a cool store, like hospitality completely. You go, yeah. I don't know how many employees you're making, I don't know how many loaves of bread and everything, like, you know, you just did a deal with William Sonoma about your cooking, like, do you sometimes just wish, like, I just want to be in that basement making yeah. pad of shoes again you and, know, and managing eight other people and just, like, putting out food? It's funny, I'll tell you. So, so I still do that. I mean, that's the thing. That's the beauty. It's yeah. like... Oh, uh, yes, life is busy and it's crazy and it's, there's a lot of stuff that happens all the time, but I will say, like, if my day is nuts, what gives me the most peace in my day is being able to just go on the line and cook, mm -hmm. plate with the guys and the gals, mm -hmm. do the food. I don't have to worry about when the next email is going to come in or, you know, it's, and that, that, that to me is what is so, Everything so just makes sense. Yeah, it's just, it's, you know. You know, the, the idea of, so your, your thing earlier about, about um, texting my buddy who's a, a ball player, I mean, that whole thing is, so we have, a, we have a group of people in our company and their whole job is to dream weave, okay? So imagine okay. this is your job. You look at all the reservations in the restaurant every single night. Mm -hmm. You go through, you scour through who's coming in. You recognize that somebody that's coming in tonight I'll give you an example of what happened. This one woman came into Demi. Every time after she, she was going through chemotherapy, after every round of chemotherapy that she went through and, and successfully went through, her treat to herself was a cinnamon roll. Okay? That was just like her way of saying, you did it. How did you know this story? She told one of our servers okay. about it. Okay. okay, so that gets translated, because that's important. Yep. This whole thing could live in amber and nobody knows yep. unless the server relates yep. it back. Yep, so we learned, we learned this about, about her. Yeah. And that this is, this, is really, this is really important. So she Says comes... Says a lot about the cinnamon roll. Yep, right. So she comes to eat at Demi. We know that she has now finished an another round of chemo. Yep. Okay. She's now cancer-free. So her dinner at Demi is a celebration of being cancer-free. 
So now you got a dream weave. What are you going to do? Yeah. What can you possibly give right. to a person that has beaten these odds? Right. So naturally, That's beaten, we did yeah. a whole tasting of cinnamon rolls for her. <laughs> that was dessert. She had like 20 cinnamon rolls in front of her. <laughs> I don't remember how many. But I mean, the, the whole point was like to have her laugh. Yeah. Have her smile. That's gorgeous. Have her take a look and understand like, oh, you actually paid attention. You recognized yeah. Yeah. when I was going through this. You recognized what that meant. And it's like, yeah, of course we recognize it. We thought about it all the time. Yeah. So we have a, a guest coming in next week. It's his birthday. He's a huge Yankees fan. My friend played for the Yankees. And so I sent him a text and said, can you send me a video about... You being a Yankees player or whatever you have to do, we'll figure it out, you know? Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's beautiful. That's, that's the fun part. Well, and what, what that, so I know a story of a chef that we both know, and I don't want to get in names, but he had a really extraordinary restaurant in Las Vegas. Okay. And it wasn't the, wasn't the secondary restaurant. This was his name, you know, his eponymous restaurant, right? Okay. And there, famous people and wealthy people would come all the time and fantastic things would happen to them. Okay. Because he had Steve Wynn's budget. He had those expectations. It was Las Vegas. Okay. And that was why you go to those restaurants in Vegas. Yep. What's extraordinary about Soigné and what you're doing is that it's Minneapolis. Yep. And this woman isn't famous. Right. And she, I don't know if she's wealthy or not, but she's conquered death. Yeah. She beat it. Yeah. And you still went to those. Yeah. You still go to all the measures, right? Yeah. Yeah. Still have fun with it. So what, explain I mean, to everyone what, I know it's Soigné. What is, what is, where does that come from? What does that mean? So to be Soigné. Which is the name of your hospitality group. Yep, yep. So that's to be, re, to basically to be, to be refined, right? So the whole idea of being Soigné is to, is to find refinement. And so the intention of, the intention of that company and the attention, the intentionality of what it means to then be refined in our world is like, okay, how do you find refinement? And what does that look like? Mm -hmm. and, where mm -hmm. does, and where does that exist within, within, your, within your world? And so that's the intention of Soigné. And, and, and it's funny because D one of Danielle's business partners said to me, you're going to do the same mistake that Danielle did. You're going to name your company something that nobody knows how to say. <laughs> well, she wasn't well, far off. What is his? I don't remember. Well, it, well, his first one, I can't remember what his first one was, but then they changed it to, to Dynex. And I don't remember what the... The for whatever the first one was, obviously nobody could say no, it, so they had say, to change yeah. it. <clears throat> so let's but get I, back to the cooking for a second. Yeah. You, got, uh, you got sweet red onions, yep. peas, yep. and uh, just... A little assortment of mushrooms. Assortment of mushrooms. And then we've got the gnocchi in here just poaching. Yeah. So it looks very much like kind of a spetzel in that way, right? Yeah, So it's it just yeah. like... Yeah. And listen, you can do it a lot of different ways. You can make it very uniform. You can put a string over here. Yeah. You can make them perfect. Right. You can make them nice and rustic like this. Many Austrian German cookbooks have been written about this. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a million there's And there a million are grandmothers and aunts and uncles that will argue for days about the right way to do the it. The right way to do it, right? Yeah. So you just wait until they float. Right, and then you know that they're all done and they're ready to go. Yeah. And then I'll put them in here. Some butter. Saute it up. Everything's we'll... better with butter. I mean, and then what... you'll plate. And then when is it? When is it not better with butter? It's never not better with butter. It's a dairy state. You know what to tell me? Yeah, it's a valid point. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't even have to think about that. You just went. And you just went ahead and told me. Yeah. No, I'm. It's part of my role. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. You, ha you actually. You have to endorse that, right? Well, in for, fact, when I was for a lot of years, I did. <laughs> no, but when I was driving here, I so appreciated seeing this, this um, uh, house on the side of the freeway. The, the, it says, you know, the sign for food is like this, and the sign for cheese is like yeah, that. Yeah, that's right. And I kind of drove by, and I, I mean, if I could have stopped, I would have stopped because I wanted to see why is during, cheese so much During more the Cold prominent. War, people would talk about the Iron Curtain. Yeah. Uh, when you came from Minnesota to Wisconsin, you have passed through the cheese curtain. Yeah. Or over the cheese curtain. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, it's a cultural identity. It's a, like, $7 billion a year industry or 34 or some huge. It's, like, not even, it's, like, crazy, crazy. when you hear the number. I mean, it's crazy. crazy. And, yes, for years when I hosted a show that was sponsored by the Milk Marketing Board. Yeah. I did absolutely have to. I'm sure. Yeah. 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 I mean, people want to know. Yeah. Right? Keep the faith. I'll probably put a little bit of lemon juice in there because with all the fat, you need a little bit of acid. Yeah. Okay. So I'll just put a little bit of acid into here. So you could make this in your sleep. Yeah. Yeah, you maybe did. Yeah, I probably have. <laughs> yeah. Especially at Cafe Balloon. Yeah. 
I mean, that restaurant was, boy, it was fun, but oh, a lot of work. Yeah. But it's a special, it's a, it's a special restaurant, no matter what. I think it was always a special restaurant. So you come, you come back and you open up Spoon, and yeah. then you open up Demi, and yeah. then you open up Belcour, which yep. is the bakery. Yep. All in a pretty crisp clip. Yeah. Uh, and now you've got some new stuff coming on. Yeah, so we're working on, so the bakery, we're do, the bakery's been great and doing well. We'll probably do another one of those. And then we signed a deal with Four Seasons is being built in Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. So we'll be, we'll be the restaurant group to take over the Four Seasons. So we'll put a restaurant, a bar, and a cafe inside of there. Okay. We have a catering company that is not public called KZ Provisioning. And so we're the exclusive caterers to the Minnesota Wild, the Minnesota Lynx, and the Minnesota Timberwolves. So we only cook for the players and the coaches. Okay. Um, it's a really fun gig, honestly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's this year has been really hard because of COVID, um, naturally, and dealing with. I mean, our the wild hockey team they had an outbreak at one point. Of course, they're on the roads so that helped us. But yeah. You know, like just to have a meeting with the guys. You have to get everybody has to be tested so many times. So that's that that's been hard. But it's really fun. You get to know these players in such a great way. Um, basketball is very different than hockey. NHL stands for the Never Hungry League for a reason. The guys can just eat. Um, basketball, they, they, the guys, they wear Fitbits in the lining of their shorts. They're very data-driven, very analytical. You know, um, yeah. you know everything about the way their body ticks, and by that, you change and you manipulate all the food. So we work with strength coaches. We work with nutritionists. We work with the head coach, the doctors, the whole team. Wow. And we craft and curate all the food that they eat. Basketball is five meals a day. Hockey is three meals a day. If they're playing, it's usually two, and then they take a nap and then eat after the game. Wow. Um, so we have full staff <clears throat> in, in both facilities, kitchens built in both facilities. Um, and so we're really at their beck and call to do whatever it is that they want to do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're in-house catering, very specific. Yeah, and yeah, it's very specific. It's non-public. Um, which there's a beauty to that, actually. Yeah. yeah. Um, number one, number two, the season is the season. Yeah. It doesn't shorten; it only lengthens. Right. right. Um, you know, so. <laughs> but there are known quantities. There is. I mean, yeah. you know how many guys and gals are going to show up. You know, the, yep. the coach, the coach. You know, the 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 coaches and 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 that they sort of tell you all those things. The things that get weird about it sometimes is you know their flight gets in late at one o'clock in the morning, and so. We'll find a hospitality moment. For example, the, the, the Lynx, or was it the Timberwolves maybe came home from a trip, really cold. They landed at like one in the morning. And as a gift to welcome them home from their 10 day trip, we, we flew out or we drove out to, the, <clears throat> to where they landed. And right when they got off the plane, there was just like cups of consomme, oh. warm consomme for them to drink to like warm up. And plus we, they had a game the next day, so we kind of needed to get their body to get back to normal. Wow. Um, but stuff like that, just being really thoughtful and thinking those things through. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. It's been busy, but it's. So, do you, are these your wildest dreams, or did you like when you were thinking about the change and moving here? Were you thinking, and then if I get a chance to do this, I'll do this, and if I get a chance to do mm. this, I'll do this, and if I get a chance to do this, or was it your business just kept developing and you found opportunities? Yeah, you know. Um, I, I would say that I'm I'm living. I would say very honestly, I am living what I have dreamt to live. Mm -hmm. But I will also say that my wildest dreams are bigger than what I'm in right now. Yeah. Um, and so now it's a matter of going after and finding out exactly what those are and where they exist and then how to get them. Hmm. So, you know, did I always imagine Spoon and Stable to be successful? Did I imagine it to be busy? Did I imagine it to be what it has been for me the last seven years? The very honest answer, without sounding like an egotistical jerk, mm -hmm. is yes. Sure. I did, because I thought about it. You I had that I, point. I, I, yeah. I imagined it. Um, but I also know that we can do more. And more doesn't mean 15 more restaurants. Right, right. Right? Like, I think that's the thing that people, you know, Get more doesn't mean and... money. Yeah. Right? None of that is more. Yeah. Um, and, and so I think it's about really just taking and, and sort of like manifesting a bit, a bit of the, what that what that wildest dream is but yeah i mean for sure i'm i'm living what i what i expected to be living through and what my dreams are yeah um but i also spent you know and you know this like i spent so much time working for danielle and for my mentors and watching them i mean the whole reason why i went to work for danielle is because i wanted a front row seat to one of the best in the world yep and see how he runs his company. I mean, when I started for him, he had five restaurants. When I left, he had 18. So to see a growth in a company to mm -hmm. go from five to 18 mm -hmm. and to open up restaurants from Vegas to Singapore yeah, and to grow that big, 
it's it's impactful. Yeah. You know? But there's also lessons of I don't want to do that. Like right. God bless him, yep. but that's not for me. That's right. Yeah. And that's important that's an important thing to recognize. Yeah. You know, like I remember leaving and saying, I don't know if I want to travel that much around the world. Right. Right. You know? I mean, listen, I, I closed one restaurant during COVID, which was fifteen miles from Spoon and Stable. And I moved the bakery across the street from Spoon and Sable. <laughs> okay, so my life, I have the bakery here. Spoon and Sable here. Yeah. I have Demi here. Yeah. The Four Seasons is right there. So I'm in three city blocks. What's funny is that your, uh, I guess, your, your work zone, your culinary like commute, is more like Danielle's would have been if he'd stayed in Lyon. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it is For now. a walk. Just like, yeah. 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 yeah, than it is now. Yeah. Um, and probably the way you in, in, interact with your purveyors and things like too. Yeah. It's just right there. Yeah. Yeah, the way that he would have. Um, whereas he's so much fun. stretched from Singapore to... But he loves that. That's yeah. his jam. That is his jam. You know, he loves it. That, that, that gives him so much excitement. He's now moving at 65 miles yeah. an hour. He's like, I, I'm standing still. And listen, as long as, as long as that's what makes him happy, I'm, I'm all for it. And that's why, that's why I loved working for him. I love to support that. Yeah, yeah. You know? Do you have more to cook? That's it. That's I'm, it. I'm cooked. All right, well... Uh, Should we eat? I don't have a spoon. It's just, let's get some... Five spoons. Oh, right on. Be weird if you did. It'd be weird if I did. Be right? really weird. I, yeah. You know, I, would, I didn't want to take the three spoons out of my pocket that I stole <laughs> and use it to eat, so I thought I'd get some fresh ones instead. Um, how do you? While we dig into this, how do you um, stay married? Be a dad. <laughs> um, have some sanity. Um, get, get a vacation. Take well, a nap. Do holidays because yeah, all of everybody it. comes to you. I've seen it on social media where, like, the bakery is overwhelmed because of what people are going to pick up because mm -hmm. they want your stuff, mm -hmm. right? How do you uh, how do you find balance, basically? Well, I mean, that's that's sort of the. I, I'll put it this way: to me, you know, ba balance. I don't really believe in it. I don't know if it. I don't think it actually exists, right? I think it's an important question that people ask, uh -huh. and I think it's an important answer to search for. But my life is work, and work is life. And they're very interweaved with one another. My fabric, those, those, that's part of the fabric mm -hmm. of who makes me who I am. Mm -hmm. If I can't have... And your wife knew that when she married you. I mean, the first time Linda and I met, she's from Sweden. We met in Switzerland. So we lived in Switzerland together. We moved to London together. And then we moved to San Diego together. So that must have been a year and a half after we first got together. And when we moved to San Diego, it was the first time we ever had breakfast together. Because my hours in Europe were 7 a.m. until 4 p.m. Then I'd get an hour off, go back at 5 p.m., get home at 1 o'clock in the morning. How do you have time to date? Get up. Uh, I, you have an hour off. <laughs> I mean, you, know, you do a lot in hours, you know? I, I mean, that's why when people say they can't meditate for 10 minutes, I'm like, I met my wife in 10 minutes. <laughs> Come on, you meditate. <laughs> get an hour. You we know? were both younger men. Though. I mean, you Let's get an espresso, a little milfoy, you sit down, you talk, mm -hmm. you're like, I have 40 minutes. Yeah. Okay, before I have to get back to work. Yeah. So this is either going to be something right. or it's not. Right. Because I have 40 minutes and then tomorrow's I Tuesday. I like your soul and you're really hot, <laughs> but I got to go. <laughs> I got to go back to work. I got to make the bread for tonight's dinner service. <laughs> but that, you know, so she, yeah, of course she knew that that's sort of my life. That's what we were getting into. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, I think for me, a lot of it is, is, always, is always just being able to have the opportunity to kind of I need to leave the restaurants because my son is playing a soccer game at mm -hmm. 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. I need to allow myself that opportunity to leave. And you know what's crazy? The only person that gets, and I'll tell you, I've been cooking. I'm 41 years old. I've been cooking since I was 15 years old. I've been in charge of restaurants since I was 24 years old. I still cannot leave my restaurant at 8 o'clock at night and not feel guilt. Mm -hmm. No matter what. It doesn't matter. Well, and, and That'll never leave you. It won't. And it's fine. That will never leave And I recognize that. I recognize that that just won't, yeah. it's not something that's going to just go away, mm -hmm. right? And, and, and it's not really like guilt that I'm not there. It's just that I remember what it was like to be cooking on the line and you're sweating and you're pushing out all these covers and you look back and you see the owner come through and then leave and you're like, yeah, you know, but it's, it, it is what it is. So balance, I don't search for it. I accept it. Um, I, I definitely find time to get away. Yeah. I definitely find time to turn things off as best as I can. You just did spring break for a week with your family. Yeah. Like, that's a reality. Yeah. I'm yeah. very disciplined about my sleep. So I'm very disciplined about my nighttime schedule. I'll leave the restaurants at 9 or 9.30 every night. Mm -hmm. It's very rare that I'll stay later. I mm -hmm. go to bed 
very, I go to bed right away at 10 o'clock. I get up at 6 a.m. I'm religious about going to the gym four days a week. You know, so like those things I'm very disciplined on. Yeah. And I just practice that discipline throughout a lot of stuff, you know? Yeah. So. Sounds like balance. Yeah, that's balance. <laughs> this doesn't suck, by the way. Thanks, I appreciate you're, that. You're welcome. You're welcome. Gavin Kaysen. Thanks. Thank you, buddy. Yeah. My pleasure. Thanks for making yeah, the drive. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Thank you.